thought it'd be a great thing to do to do a tour of our boat that we're here on. So Aquila is a 2012 Moody 41 AC. Um, so those people who are Moody aficionados, um, they would argue it's not quite a proper Moody. Um, originally Moody was made in the UK, it's a UK brand, got a long and illustrious past, um, but in the early noughties um, it kind of went defunct really and the brand was purchased by Hans, or Hansa depending on your pronunciation, who were a German boat manufacturer. Um, but they kept the same team, um, so it's a guy called Bill Dixon who designed a lot of the original sort of well-respected Moody's, also designed this boat uh, and it was built in a specific Moody factory by Hansa in Germany. It's not built on the same production line as the rest of the Moody's, um, which means it's got some significant differences in spec and indeed construction technique. Um, so I would say it's a well-built modern production boat. <clears throat> So yeah, we're quite pleased with our purchase and um, we've had it over a year now and it's taken us probably a couple of thousand miles now, so we've got used to it. Um, I wanted to talk you through the boat, tell you all about its features, uh, show you some of the things we've done and changed to it uh, during the time that we've had it. So as is traditional with these kind of tours, we're starting at the front of the boat. So I'm right at the very front at the moment, and the very first thing to talk about, you can't see it at the moment, is our anchor. <laughs> we've got a Rockner style anchor, um, which is currently sat in about five meters of water. Um, we have 60 meters of 10 mil anchor chain um, and we've got about half of it out at the moment. That rather unsightly uh, red strap is showing us that we've got half of the, um, half of the chain out at the moment. Uh, you'll also see down there there's a sort of rope uh, thing going into the water um, with some rubberized sections on it. Um, this is our snubber. Um, it's actually a specialist bit of kit we had made um, in the UK. Uh, by Jimmy Green Marine, <laughs> shout out to those guys, and it's quite a clever bit of stuff because it's made out of a single piece of rope that's sort of uh, got eye splices in it that go around our cleats, through some protective hose pipe, into the water, it's got some stretchy bits on it to take out any shock, and the idea is that this takes the load off the anchor chain and off the anchor windlass in the locker down here, and provides a little bit of uh, buffer. So if there is strong winds or there is bouncy seas, um, the anchor isn't getting yanked out of the ground. Um, it's got a little bit of stretch on it. So that's really helpful and useful. Um, staying right at the front of the boat, what we've also got is um, our two head sails here. And we have got what is known as a Solent style rig. So we have two different head sails. We've got one head sail out at the front, um, which is where you'd expect it to know where to be. Um, this is actually a new sail that we've had put on. Uh, Crusader Sails have made this for us, so shout out to those guys as well. Um, this is technically no longer a Genoa. It is oversized, um, which goes past the mast, which is important for a Genoa definition. But the cut of it and the style of it and where it goes back to is actually more of a Yankee. It's really high cut and the lines on it go all the way back to the cockpit. They don't go back to the, um, the rails on the floor, which is where you'd normally expect a Genoa to go to. And this is a really lightweight, large laminate sail. Um, it's great for going downwind in. Um, it's, it's not bad for going upwind in, in fairness, but it's designed to work in lighter winds. So anything from kind of like five or six knots at the low end up to maybe 12 or 15 knots at the upper end. Um, this, is the, this is the sail we want to use. And, um, I'm sure I've shown footage of it out before. This is the Yankee in operation. Our newest sail. I was a bit dubious about it when we first got it, but we're actually really pleased with it. It works well in so many conditions. We're quite close hauled now and it's working great. And you can see it's sheeted uh, right the way back uh, to just near the cockpit, just on that block there, just in front of the winch. Um, but what's good about it, or one of the things that's good about it, is it's cut really high. So, as I'm demonstrating right now, you can see under it, your visibility is really good when that's out. A lot of Genoas are cut really low and are just above the, um, just above the safety rail. Um, so it really impacts on visibility, but this is absolutely great. And uh, it's a super lightweight laminated sail. And then inside here, this is a much 
thicker wrap, uh, even though it's a much smaller sail, is our jib. And uh, we've got a self-tacking jib. So the lines on this one go back to um, a track just in front of the mast. This line I'm holding, this blue line goes back to. And that's great, so it's, it's self-tacking. So if we're going upwind in high winds, then, uh, then this is the, the sail you want to use. And you can beat into that wind and keep tacking and tacking. And you don't really have to do any work. You just turn the boat and the, and the sail tacks itself, which is great. Um, sort of standard furlex furlers on the front, uh, nothing particularly special about those, and bow roller. Um, we've got here, we've got the anchor locker, where we've got the remaining 30 meters of our 10 mil chain in there at the moment. And you can also see I've got a, um, a petrol can in there. That's uh, where we store the petrol for the outboard, um, because there's drainage in that locker, so any fumes can escape should there be a leak. And we've got a, um, a Lumar, uh, electric anchor windlass there which is great it's pretty powerful we have no problems with it at all uh, in light conditions uh, we can just lift the anchor without even having to motor forward we just give it some revs and, and that can just pull us along nicely and lift it up I've never let us down so far <coughs> um, we've got just looking at the floor we've got a teak deck um, so teak is a fantastic product for putting on boats because it wears really well it's it's sort of fairly low maintenance really um, but it just wear away and, and I don't know if, if I was choosing something I'd perhaps go for a fake wood but this is traditional teak and um, which is a traditional kind of like thing you aspire to have on your boat so we're not going to complain about that um, and you can see the ropes from our cleats go through these fair leads so we've got these sort of metal bits on the front um, which are great um, in that it holds the rope in a really fixed position. They're also a bit of a pain because you have to thread your rope through it every time you're doing any uh, mooring. But there you go. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the, the very front section of the boat. Moving back, um, down here we've got our hatch which is down into our bedroom. Um, because it's really quite hot at the moment, um, we've got that open. One of the great things about sleeping in the forward cabin and having a forward opening locker like that is when you're at anchor like this, the boat tends to face into the wind and uh, that just scoops the air down into our bedroom, which means it doesn't get too hot. Um, just behind that is an addition that we've put on the boat. So that is a 100 watt solar panel, um, one of two that we've had mounted on the coach roof on the top of the deck here. Um, and uh, yes, we've got 200 watts of solar there, which uh, keep charging the batteries, which is good. Um, what else have we got over here? That's our spare halyard at the moment, which I just clip um, over there just to keep it out of the way. Um, if there's one thing I can't abide, it's a banging halyard. Um, if ever you go to a marina or something like that, you'll hear a ting, 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 which is ropes, typically halyards banging on the mast. I think there's no excuse for that. That's just like you've not left your boat properly. If you've got um, banging halyards like that, it's a real gripe of mine. It's really noisy. It's the sort of thing that keeps you awake if you're in the marina next to it. Um, so yeah, if you've got banging halyards on your boat, sort them out. Um, so uh, yeah, um, I've also got some rather unsightly um, bungee cords I just use to hold these ropes in place again just to make sure that at night there's nothing banging it's just really quiet I've got one here and just one on the um, on the uh, haul out for the main sh uh, main sail as well so keeping on backwards this is our mast um, Nothing exceptional about it. What we have got here is um, our mainsail, and we've got in-mast furling. Um, in-mast furling is sort of a relatively modern uh, way of doing it. Some people like them, some people don't like them. Uh, we're a fan of it. Uh, for having just two of us on board a boat, um, when you're wanting to take the sail out or put it away, this makes it really quite easy. If you've got a traditional style, uh, style sail, they're, they're kept in a bag on top of the boom over here and you have to haul it to lift it up, which is quite onerous and quite a job. And when you want to refit, there's just a little bit of a process of tying off of lines, and you normally only have a couple of stages of reefing, maybe two, maybe three if you're lucky. Um, whereas within mass furling, you can take it out all the way if you want, or you can bring it in and you can stop it at any point, which gives you an infinite number of um, sort of reefs really, which I think is great. So you can reef the sail exactly the right amount that you want, 
um, and I think it's just easy for two people. Um, people talk about them jamming and not working, we've never had that experience at all, we think they're a great thing um, and I think there's just a, a lot of people in sailing that don't like new things uh, and that's a newish style, there's a newer style from that but it's, uh, in boom furling but I won't go into that, um, but yeah we love our uh, in mass uh, furling um, mainsail. This is our mainsail fully out, it's an Elvstrom sail, it's uh, pretty fancy one actually and uh, yeah we get some reasonable speeds out of it also just while we're talking about the mast you can see the BNG radar we've had fitted that's a halo radar we had that fitted by uh, PR systems in Plymouth at the same time as having the uh, chart plotter updated and a few other electronic bits moving back a little bit more um, we've just got the hatch down into the um, into the saloon, a second solar panel that I mentioned earlier, and uh, we've got these which are basically air vents. I have them pointing one each way so we kind of capture the wind whichever it's going in. They're designed to be waterproof, um, so they you know waves and rain can't get into the boat, but they do let air in, which is just extra ventilation when you've got your hatches shut when you're at sea and things. So that's really quite handy. Um, what else have we got to say? Moving back, um, it would be remiss not to mention these things. These are little fender steps. They're on deck at the moment, um, but you pop them out and they just hang on these little lines and they hang over the deck. Um, our um, boat is quite high, our deck's quite high. So if you're stepping off the deck onto a pontoon below, it's a little bit of a drop. So you drop that out, you can stand on that and it just makes it easy to get on and off the boat, which Claire has to do a lot of. What else have we got? So moving back to here, we've got these um, plexiglass, I think it is. We've got a solid um, windscreen there, which again is quite a nice feature. Uh, means it's got really good uh, visibility. Uh, above that, we've got a spray hood that's got the more standard kind of, um, yeah, flexible, I don't know what you call that, like a polythene almost, transparent polythene that you can see through. And, um, you know, these are great and a lot of people have them, but it's easier to see through that stuff, so we quite like that. And it just um, gives the boat a nice profile as well, if you're into the aesthetic of things. Um, moving back further still, this is our cockpit. Oh, it is worthwhile saying, we had, um, this is new actually, there was one here before, but it was a bit tatty and we replaced it this year. That was done by Octagon, a shout out to them in Plymouth. Um, they also did us a bimini, which is wrapped up in that at the moment, which is a cover that goes across the top of the um, cockpit area. And they've also done us a full enclosure, so actually we can, we can do it like a big sort of awning and close it all off and make a completely waterproof and sort of windproof area inside there on a day like today you don't really need it um, so coming back into the cockpit this is where we spend quite a lot of time really so it's where we sit when we're sailing uh, it's also where we sit when we have a lot of meals um, and uh, yeah it's a great little spot um, We've added some cushions just to make it a little bit nicer. Um, but this kind of view here is what we see as we're sailing along. Um, we've got the teak floor in here and we've got a we've got a table with some fold out sides here. So you can easily sit six people around here to be honest. Um, but generally we, it's, it's just the two of us. Um, so if we take a look at this, you should be able to see that we've got a um, twin helm here so there's a wheel on each side um i don't know if any of you watching this are sailors or not they don't do different things the whole point is that if you have a single steering wheel in the center uh well for starters they're a bit tricksy to get past when you're going on and off the boat but also you can't sort of reach them from the side when the boat heals you want to be sat over here somewhere uh, you really want to be sort of sat at one edge it gives you good visibility ahead um, which is what you want and if you've got a wheel in the center unless it's a massive wheel uh, you can't really reach it so two helms is 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 much better um, and even though we've got two helms there is only a single rudder on this um, so it's yeah, yeah 
some people argue twin rudders are better because when you're healing one can grip in the water better but a single rudder is considered slightly safer if you do run aground um, then it's your keel that will hit and the rudders protected behind the keel whereas if you've got twin rudders they're sort of unprotected at the side um, if I come around here and show you some other stuff we've done this is my this is my throne really this is where I sit where I'm on passengers uh, uh, passengers I should say not passengers uh, so this is where I sit and really I've got everything at hand that I need um, from a navigational perspective communication perspective control perspective um, most of the stuff comes back to this side so if we're motoring I sit here or if we're on a, um, a starboard tack with the wind coming from the starboard side then I will sit here and it's a great spot so we've got a um, large um, uh, chart plotter here there was a smaller older one in there originally I felt it was a bit too small really and uh, so yeah we've gone for a nice big 12 inch screen there which makes it a bit easy to see exactly where you are um, we had a radio inside but we didn't have a, uh, a way of um, operating the radio from up here which isn't very helpful when there's only two of you on board so I added this um, which means I can actually use the VHF from up here so that's great but the autopilot control we've got the engine controls here and then down here we've got the, uh, the throttle and gear selector uh, so yeah I can sit here um, and uh, have a sort of commanding position of of what's going on I can see very clearly when I'm sat down out the front of the boat I've got more or less 360 degree vision from here um, which is you know really really helpful I don't need to stand up to see what's going on uh, I've got my compass just at hand and there's a couple of instruments just over by the companionway over there that tell me my wind speed and wind direction albeit I've got quite a lot of duplication by uh, in by the numbers I've got shown on here so this is yeah this is like where I spend a lot of our time when we're sailing sat just here uh, with my hand on the wheel or more often than not to be honest I, I use the autopilot a lot uh, which means I can focus on looking what's around us looking what other boats are up to keeping an eye on the chart plot to keeping an eye on the AIS on that and so yeah um, what else we got here if I zoom in over here we've got my uh, bow thruster it's absolutely amazing to have a bow thruster uh, I would hate to have a sort of 40 foot uh, plus boat um, without one of those uh, some people say it's cheating old school sailors but I say no it's an app it's just an extra tool to make things easier for yourself and why wouldn't you want that um, we've also got electric winches here so um, typically our, um, our sheets come back here depending on what tack we're on we've got the uh, sheet for the um, Yankee there which sometimes goes on here uh, over there we've got the sheet for the um, <clears throat> self tacking jib which sometimes comes back here and then there's a red line over there which is the mainsail sheet so sometimes they you know depending on what we're up to one of those three lines tends to come back here and I can control it easy either tightening it up or, or letting it go um, but if we are on the other tack over on this side where I also sometimes sit uh, we've got same deal in terms of the electric winch I've got a secondary autopilot control I had that fitted because there was no uh, controls over here at all uh, and I've had another instrument fitted as well just so you can see a little bit what's going on uh, and also what I've done I've not got it in position at the moment is I've added a little USB um, USB-C charger there uh, and also a clamp so we can fit a um, an iPad onto here and the iPad can mirror um, what's going on with the main chart plotter so you can basically get exactly the same information um, uh, as you can from the main chart plotter over here repeated I've also fitted a second um, USB uh, just by the companion way so which means you can put the iPad forward as well just under that windscreen so if it's really cold and a bit windy you can tuck yourself right in at the front there under the protection of, of the windscreen and everything else but you can still read the chart plotter and see what's going on so that's really handy um, got various lines coming back here these are uh, the furling lines for the sail but also things for the dinghy that I'll come on to in a second same over on this side um, so this is a 
I've got to mention these really. There's uh, two seats uh, on this boat over in the corner, one there and one over on this side as well. Um, they are sometimes known as princess seats in the world of sailing. And um, you can sit yourself up here, as I'm about to do. And uh, this is a lovely spot to uh, to sit really and it gives you just amazing visibility you sat quite high up here so you can see over the top of things and again gives you a really commanding view other people call these uh, gin and tonic seats because uh, it's also a nice place to sit um, um, but uh, I've slightly uh, changed the um, proposition of these because normally these would be quite a sunny position as well because you're away from your sail what you can see looming above me here is some solar panels um, so one of the biggest changes structurally i guess visually that we've made to the boat is um, we've added this large arch to the back of the boat and it's um it's multifunction really so it's a huge structure built by a chap called geordie jan shout out to him as well uh, he welded it up in newcastle bought it down in a van and then uh, yeah me and him sort of fastened it to the back of the boat um so it's really securely pass uh, uh, really securely fastened to the boat it's got big bolts going through the deck it's also got extra bolts going through the back of the transom it's a huge structure really and we've added to the top of that four solar panels they're victron 175 watt panels so there's 750 watt of solar panels back there combined with the other two on the coach roof so that gives us um, uh, 950 watts of solar um, which is, is pretty good really electricity is not something we have to worry about anymore we can go at anchor like we are now for as long as we want and as providing it's sunny like it is today our batteries are fully charged by lunchtime we don't even need to worry about anything um, so yeah um, the solar panels were put on by uh, Elite Marine in Plymouth a chap called Lewis they were pretty good as well they worked on those um, and just coming to the very back of the boat got a few safety features on the back here that's an inflatable dam boy and a uh, life boy so the idea is if one of us falls off the boat you immediately throw those out the back of the boat um, and the dam boy is like an inflatable flag that pops up to make it easier to find the person and the idea is that the person who fell off should be able to sort of paddle over to where that is and they've got something to hold on to and they're a bit easier to find um, next to it we've got our torpedo electric outboard um, that's just fastened on here at the moment moment um, we've actually got two outboards on this boat there's a larger 15 horsepower petrol on the back of the dinghy at the moment so our go-to if we can is to use the electric because um, we can charge it on the boat it doesn't need petrol it's really quiet it doesn't need maintenance it's a really really good option and that's fine if you're just going a few hundred yards or even 10 15 minutes away and you're doing a few little trips like that it's great for that it doesn't go very fast um, but you know it's it's a brilliant option um, but we have the petrol and the reason we have the petrol is so we can do things like anchor where we are now that shoreline you can see in the background um, is about a mile away um, so there are people on the beach over there they're just tiny tiny little dots so um, the electric outboard only goes about two or three miles an hour so it takes quite a long time to get over there whereas the um, petrol outboard we can go about 10 15 miles an hour so it's just a different game and we've got you know a lot more range on that so it's horses for courses really horses for courses um, what else have we got back here um, this is where we put the uh, petrol outboard when it's mounted on the boat this thing's a bit shabby tat really I'm getting a new one of these fitted very soon uh, something a bit stronger and a bit neater looking than that um, we've got the fold down swim platform at the back so we love this boat because it feels really safe and secure with that up and with these rails across you've got a really high sort of uh, protection off the back of the boat a lot of boats we see modern sailing boats especially racing style ones have really open backs and both Claire and I are slightly clumsy we don't want to fall off the back of the boat so we really like the idea that it's, that it's quite well protected even when you sat on these seats you've got these really high backs and you're quite sort of set back in from the back of the boat so it just feels really safe but when you do want to go out you can open this back up this folds down you can jump onto this and then suddenly you suddenly you're on a um, you're on a bathing platform which means it's dead easy to uh, go from here and jump in the water and there's a little ladder on the side to allow you to climb back into the boat um, over here is Mini Aquila 
This is uh, Aquila's Tender. So this is a Highfield 290 classic uh, dinghy. It's got an aluminium hull um, and uh, yeah, it's basically a rib rather than uh, an inflatable dinghy that you sort of deflate and stick in a locker. Um, it is the largest dinghy I could get that would fit on the boat. Essentially the length of this, which is 290 centimetres, is more or less the same as the width of the back of the boat back here, um, which means it can fit on the back of the boat sideways and it doesn't hang off either side. Um, and it's a great little thing. And um, We've got on the back of it there the uh, yeah the 15 horsepower Suzuki outboard, which I've only just finished uh, running in. Really, you have to run it in gently for the first 10 hours, and uh, that setup we've got there gives us real range. Um, we want to be able to anchor in a spot that's maybe a couple of miles away from a town and be able to get ourselves into that town rather than having to stay or pay for a marina and that really gives us the ability to do that and um, and to be honest it's really fast as well um, I've not really taken it up much to full throttle just because I'm still wearing it in but even at half throttle it planes and it feels like we're flying along so that's a great little thing and it will um, yeah get up on the plane as they as they call it where it sort of lifts out the water with both Claire and me and some sort of shopping in there, no problem. Um, so yeah, that's a, a great little thing. Essentially, that's our car. So yeah, the other feature of this arch that we've got is it's got davits built into it. So these um, little pulleys up here and this rope system um, with those hooks on it, they're designed to clip onto the lifting points on the dinghy. And um, we've got this set up with a, well, it's quite a fancy bit of line really. A shout out to Wall Spiles in Plymouth who made this up for me because it's got um, Dyneema uh, sections that come through here, two different lengths of Dyne uh, Dyneema so that those hooks uh, hang at the right height. Um, that comes through that pulley or through those two pulleys down to, through these two pulleys and down to this block down here uh, and just under here it's a bit hard to see the two bits of Dyneema then get spliced into a single piece uh, of sort of normal 10 mil line that goes through that clutch there feeds back to another pulley and then goes on to my winch here so what that allows me to do and I'll, I'll cut in some footage of it is we can clip the dinghy on and we can fasten the line onto the electric winch and we can just pull the whole dinghy out the water which means in theory if we press this button it should lift the dinghy Holy moly. Um, we've got a separate line here, this blue one, which allows me to lift the outboard off the back as well. That outboard's best part of 50 kilograms, so it's tricksy for someone to lift, um, but it's got a strap on the top of it, we hook this line on it, and then we lift it up and we put it on here, just using the electric winch, which takes all the strain out of it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the kind of multi-purpose arch uh, that we've got on the back of it. So, um, yeah, that's more or less the end of the boat tour. I mean, if you've made it this far, I'll just give you a few stats. So this is a Moody 41 AC. The 41 stands for 41 feet. Uh, in reality, it's closer to 42 feet. It's about 12.7 uh, meters long. Although now we've added this arch on the back, which sticks off the back of the boat, and we've got the dinghy on there. We're probably the best part of 14 meters with that all in place. Um, at the widest point, the boat is four meters wide. Although, as I mentioned, it's about three meters wide just at the back over here. We've got a, um, a, a bulb keel on the bottom of this, which is about two meter draft which is deep enough to mean that we can sail quite well, but it's also not so deep that we can't get into anchorages like this and come in, uh, well I'd say relatively close into shore, but this is a really shallow uh, sort of sloping beach, we're still a mile away. Um, and yeah, we've got a 
40 horsepower diesel diesel engine on this boat so our cruising speed is about um, it's about six knots under engine and we can sail at about seven or eight knots if we've got a reasonable amount of wind so yeah that's it really um, that's the end of the tour of the outside of the boat um, we will be shooting and filming an interior of the boat at some point to show you around the bedrooms and show you around the uh, saloon and everything else so keep an eye out for that um, if you do enjoy our videos I'd really appreciate a like or ask any questions in the comments section below and if you really feel like it subscribe to our channel that would help us out a lot too um, but that's it for today thank you very much for watching bye bye